Since the dinosaurs have gone extinct, there has been a general trend of mammals taking over in ecosystems across the world. And for the last two million years or so, the world's large predator niches have been dominated almost exclusively by mammals. But up until as little as 50,000 years ago, during the Pleistocene, when Ice Age giants were roaming the northern hemisphere, and African beasts were occupying the savannas, a giant lizard was able to cling on as one of Australia's main terrestrial predators. In the first half of the Cenozoic, just after the dinosaurs had gone extinct, there were still notable large reptiles that were often the largest predators in their habitat. In South America, there was Titanoboa, the car-sized turtle Carbonimus, and in Europe, there was the crocodiles that had specialised to living on land. But about 45 million years ago, the large reptiles started to go extinct, and mammals took their place. During the Eocene, the Earth's temperatures started getting cooler, and this trend would continue for millions of years. As the climate became colder and drier, the rainforests of the Eocene retreated to the equator, being replaced with grasslands and drier forests. This new climate suited mammals significantly more than reptiles, as being warm-blooded they were able to stay active for longer in cooler climates. But also, as the ecosystems were becoming less forested, their superior respiratory systems would have seen them fare better over grasslands, meaning that large reptilian predators were confined to the rivers and lakes. However, 40 million years later, Megalania, a giant predatory land reptile, appeared in Australia. Megalania was very big. Although estimates have varied in recent years, large ones were probably able to grow to lengths of 5 metres, and yet it was living at a time when the rest of the continent's large land predators were mammalian. Megalania were monitor lizards, and this may be one of the reasons they were able to compete with mammals in their ecosystem, as monitor lizards are the last living large reptilian land predators, and can hunt in the same habitats as large mammalian predators. For instance, the Nile monitor can commonly grow to around 1.5 metres long, and is found all over sub-Saharan Africa alongside big mammals. One reason they are able to do this is that monitor lizards can eat very old decaying meat without getting sick, to such an extent that Komodo dragons are known to dig up graves and eat dead people. Due to this, it is highly likely that Megalania was able to exploit food sources that other predators it may have sometimes come into contact with, like the marsupial lion, would have not been able to take advantage of. Also, unlike any other reptile alive today, monitor lizards are able to run for extended periods of time. All reptiles apart from crocodiles have three-chambered hearts, which means that some oxygenated and deoxygenated blood can mix at certain points while the heart is pumping, which makes the process inefficient and means that reptiles often tire easily. In comparison, the four-chambered hearts of birds and mammals keeps the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood completely separate to stop this from happening. Monitor lizards are subjected to the same three-chambered hearts of all non-crocodilian reptiles, but the sections of their hearts are pumped at very different pressures, greatly reducing the amount of blood mixing, and this makes their hearts superficially act like a four-chambered heart. Due to this adaptation among others, it is the consensus that monitor lizards are capable of the highest metabolic rates out of any living reptile, and they use this to great effect. In fact, their hunting strategies are reminiscent of the active pursuit techniques employed by similar-sized mammals. The Parenti, the largest living Australian lizard, is capable of hunting and catching speedy mammals like rats and rabbits, and on occasion can even catch birds. And if Megalania was capable of the same speedy pursuits as its cousins, then it would be a formidable hunter of the marsupial herbivores even out on grasslands or plains. Although it is unclear what their closest relation out of the monitor lizards was, it has been suggested that they may be related to the Parenti due to similarities in their skull shape. However, the most popular theory now is that they are related to Komodo dragons, and this makes sense seeing as the historic range of Komodo dragons was much larger, stretching throughout Indonesia and across northern Australia, and they may have even originally evolved there. So Australia was home to two giant species of lizard, and there was even another large reptile called Quincana that was a land crocodile and could commonly grow to the size of a Komodo dragon, but one species may have grown considerably larger meaning that three out of the four large predators in Pleistocene Australia were reptiles, when the rest of the world was dominated by mammals. Because of this, Megalania evolving in Australia likely has something to do with the continent itself as well. Australia is the driest place on Earth barring Antarctica, with two-thirds of the continent either being desert or highly arid. The lack of rainfall creates poor conditions for plant life among much of the country, which means less mammalian herbivores can be supported here than in other areas of the world. There were some large animals that would have lived here at the same time as Megalania, like Diprotodon, which was basically a one-ton wombat, 
and Procoptodon, which was a very large prehistoric kangaroo. However, herbivores seem to have been smaller and less diverse than in other parts of the world during the Pleistocene. This is because mammals have large brains and are warm-blooded, which require a lot of energy and so need to eat a lot every day to satisfy these needs. As there were less prey animals around, it would have been harder to support large mammalian predators for the same reason. Yet despite lacking in large herbivores, Australia is a reptile's paradise, with the highest number of reptile species compared to land area than anywhere else in the world. And this is because reptiles have far less taxing energy requirements than mammals, due to being cold-blooded and having slower metabolisms. The Komodo dragon, for instance, is able to eat a very large amount of food in one sitting, up to 80% of its body weight, and then not need to eat again for up to a month. And what potentially makes reptiles inferior to mammals in other parts of the world was their strength in Australia. And so an animal like Megalania or Quincana may be better suited predators for Australia than a mammalian one. Also, as reptile diversity was higher than mammal diversity in this part of the world, where it is usually the other way around, means that there was a higher chance that the large animal niches would be filled by reptiles. It has been hypothesized this is the reason behind why Australia has so many venomous species, as venomous animals don't need to expend much energy to catch their prey, whereas a lion for example needs to chase an animal running at top speed and then wrestle it to the ground, a venomous animal like certain species of snake merely need to get a good bite and then go and find the animal after it has died, and Megalania may have been venomous also. As it is thought that their closest living relatives are Komodo dragons, there is a high likelihood that they may have shared their venomous bite. There are glands in the mouth of Komodo dragon that excrete anticoagulant hematoxin that would stop the victim's blood from clotting and greatly increases the chance of them dying of blood loss. This adaptation is put to great use by Komodo dragons today that are able to take down water buffalo, animals that can be six times their size. This means that Megalania would have been able to kill large prey like a diprotodon without expending too much energy. Unfortunately, most likely due to a combination of humans arriving in Australia and Indonesia combined with climate change, the Megalania went extinct and the historic range of the Komodo dragon was shrunk down to a fraction of its original size, making the islands of Komodo and Flores the last places in the world with a terrestrial reptile as their main predator. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to be notified of future uploads, then consider subscribing. Many thanks to my patrons for supporting me especially Fossilworth and Greenfors. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge.